Here we are with the next step on the Audi TT. We have done the baseline tune, uh, flashing the car, and it's now time to upgrade the injectors. And many thanks to Lindsay at Matosa Performance. She sent out a set of 550cc Bosch injectors uh, for me to put in this car. Barkley is here, tennis ball at the ready wanting to play. No, it's not playtime, sorry. So let's have a look at this. This is the fuel rail. The injectors are underneath and um, I'm assuming all I do is undo, there's two Allen bolts, one there and one there, and then the whole thing should lift off. You've got to be careful because it's probably still under pressure. The one thing I don't like is these let's put some light on here there you go look at that the one thing i'm not so sure about here is these flexible lines for the fuel rail they look a little bit aged um so i've got to be real careful about bending those those are to be replaced and there are little uh wire clips that you can just push here and the electrical electrical connectors should pop off <laughs> so like I said, they should pop off, but these things never go as planned. So let's uh, let's start undoing this rail. Let's get some rags ready as well, because it's bound to be messy. Right, gloves. First things first, gloves. I bought a huge box of these ages ago and then completely forgot about them. Um, so anyway, I think what we do is we undo these two bolts underneath here, which is securing the fuel rail. I have a feeling we don't need to take anything off and we should just be able to lift this out of the way. So let's have a look and I'm sure there will be a bunch of fuel that will spew out. Now what we need is we need a magnetic doodad to take that out. And that spaceship there is... So the spaceship you can hear is my wife, in the electric car. So let's grab that one. why you need a magnetic doodad. So first lesson, be careful not to drop your bolts down. So now that is undone, should just be able to pull this off. Well, look at that, to actually take the electrical connectors out. We press these things here. Right, so those are the electrical connectors out. Now we have to pull these clips off, which should just slide off, is my guess. Um, and the first one is going to release a whole bunch of fuel everywhere. So let's put the cloth underneath. It would appear these clips slide off towards the front. Right, so that's the first of the clips out. That's very easy. Now let's... <laughs> get this injector out. There we go. There we go. This one actually doesn't look too bad, um, but they are different to the ones that I've got. So this is the one that just came out. This is the new one. Obviously, you take the plastic bits off. Um, 
one thing that's interesting to note on this one, the seal has come off the top, so I've got to make sure I get that out. You can see the seal in blue there, but the connector is different. So they actually come with these little adapters, which just clip into place. So the adapter clips into place like that, and then you have the same connector. So first thing, get that seal out. Oh, that's interesting. The seal isn't in there, so it's gone somewhere else. And there it comes. And that one came out with the seal as well. So I've just got two other seals to find. So this one I could actually feel. Um, so I should be able to get it out with this screwdriver. If we're lucky. Yep, there's that seal. And poking around. No, there definitely isn't one there. On the first one. Which concerns me a little bit. So that's interesting. There's no sign of the seal from the first injector. But, um, I mean, it must have been there because otherwise it would be spraying fuel everywhere. And... I mean, I had, I had the cloth in the way, so there's no way it actually fell down into the intake, I hope. So here is my new injector, and we will go in in reverse order. So we'll go from four down to, uh, to one, and I just want to make sure it's in nice and tight. I've put the adapter on there. And finally, number four, well actually it's number one, but this is the last one going in. And make sure all those adapters are on nice and tight. Now don't forget to reinstall these clips, which go in from the front to the back. These holes on the side of the clip clip to the conical part of the, uh, the fuel rail and then there are grooves on the side of the injector and then the clip just slides in like that and that's what holds it in place. And there we go. All that remains is to clip these connectors back on. which are a little more difficult to do now because it's, with these adapters on, it's a little higher. So these just clip back in place like that. So that's our electrical connections done. And now we just have to carefully slide this rail back in and the injectors will each go into those holes. Let's try not to drag any dirt or anything down inside them. So there we go. Those are all in place and then we just push down and that's it. So now we just put these two bolts back in. Being careful not to not to drop them. So this one I can get up here just to hold it in place. This one's a little more fiddly. You have to kind of get it in place underneath and then hope you don't drop it. Because there isn't room to get it down through the gap in the rail. And there we go. So having one of these is essential. Now we just have to disappear onto the internet to see what the uh, what the torque specs are for that, and uh, and we're done. Well, I was a little concerned about that uh, that injector seal because I couldn't find it, but there it is. It's dropped down there. It'll be safe there, and it's not like I needed it again. So looking at my trusty source on the internet, i.e., the first page I found. It said for the torque setting 
pounds. No, I imagine that 7.5 pounds feet, not inches, pounds, or whatever. I never get the order right of these things. On my little torque wrench, that would be 90 uh, inch pounds. Check this one again. So the that's that's tightened down to 7.5 pounds pounds feet. Now all that remains is to put this on, and there are two clips at the back that it is supposed to just slide into. But I just tried that and it didn't work. So I believe they're there. There we go. So those are in tight, and then these two screws, once you get these in, it's a quarter turn, and that's it. So don't keep tightening them, because they will not tighten. Not like these ones, which look the same, which are actually screw in. Now I'm leaving the top off that, because I have to reflash everything again. So I need to connect up my battery tender making sure that I've done it the right way around. I mean, this side does have a ruddy great big plus here, but I want to make sure on the battery there's a plus and a negative. So I can hook those up. They are, that's hooked up so I don't make the same mistake that I made on my BMW and run the battery flat while I'm flashing it. So this time, aha, I'm clever. I've, uh, I'm not sitting in the car doing this because it really is so hot in here. So open the window, just got the computer outside of the car and we are going to write the ECU. And this is the updated file, open. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it now seems to be doing its thing, even though down here it says it's disconnected. Now it says it's connected, it's doing its 19 sectors, and presumably it only writes the sectors where there's a change, so this should be quicker. So that was a lot quicker than last time. And um, so now switch off the engine and we run it for 20 minutes again, same as last time for it to understand what the changes are. And then uh, we'll do another log. One thing I did mean to do while I was in here was check at least one of the spark plugs. Um, and the reason why I said check at least one is they're a pain to get to. So I'm gonna take the cover off again, look at spark plug one. My understanding is they were replaced not that long ago. They're NGK copper plugs, which are best for performance, but they wear out real quick. So we need to uh, need to have a look at those. So this is why I'm saying we're just going to look at plug one. One and two are easy to get at. Three and four are hidden underneath all this crap. And it's got a hand with a sign saying don't touch. Presumably that gets hot. Oh, it says Achtung. So they're, they're, it's not good. Oh, it's high voltage as well. Ah, oh, well, there you go. Let's play over here. There's not a nasty hand sign here. Well, it seems like all, every single one of these clips is different. So this one, you just had to push back on this tab here and it loosens up. And then I believe the ignition coil will just pull straight off. There we go. Look at that. And then all the way down there, there is a spark plug. And all the way down there, there's a little bit of oil. That's not good. Let's have a look at this thing. So here we are. One oily. There's a little bit oily around here. 
but that plug itself doesn't look too bad. Let's just check the gap. The recommended gap is 0 0.028, which on my feeler gauge is 0 0.711 millimeters. They're about right. They may be a little over, so I'm tempted just to, to leave them for the moment. I'll check number two as well, and I'm gonna get some Iridium plugs, which will last longer, but potentially don't have such good performance. But I think these are fine to go. So plug two, even more oily than plug one. Again, a little over, but I'm gonna leave them as they are for the moment because I'm gonna replace them all. We're gonna have to investigate that oil. So spark plug gaps, a little over where the optimal should be, but they should be fine for the moment. Uh, worrying amount of oil on the threads of the plugs. Uh, I'm gonna check into that. So this car is now ready for a test drive. Well, I've just taken the car out for its 20 minute drive so we can get used to its new programming. And I mean, quite honestly, at this point, I think any improvements are going to be incremental. Uh, they, well, they did the change to the map for the injectors, but they also said they smoothed out mid-range power delivery and added more boost. It doesn't feel like it's got any more boost, so there may be a problem somewhere else in the car, but it's definitely smoother getting into the boost. I'm definitely noticing that. So there's less of a surge, which actually makes it less exciting to drive, but it's probably better power delivery. Anyway, as today is only 100 degrees and overcast, as opposed to 110 degrees and blazingly sunny, I've left the car out so I can wash it so we can have a look at it.